Hey all and welcome back to Puzzle Dex Gaming and a new video on the channel going into a bit more detail on how to level my league starter build as it's a little bit more complex than my normal starters and it's difficult to convey in the POV exactly how to level. So early on you're going to be focusing on physical damage as Duelist does not get any flat elemental damage gems in Act 1. The skill I recommend you take as your reward when you get to town is split in steel and you link that with the chance to bleed gem you already have. Ideally, you want to be using a two-handed sword, so check the vendor. You'll also need a green-red link if the sword doesn't have this. If this combo of sword and links isn't available, you always pick up a second one-handed sword when you kill Hillock. Just equip that and dual wield for now, but replace it with a two-handed sword as soon as possible. Early on, any flat physical damage you can get on the build is huge, so pick up all the portal scrolls and wisdom scrolls that you come across, because you want to buy two iron rings from Nessa as soon as possible and one rustic sash. At level four, take Ancestral Protector and Dash as your rewards and then buy War Banner. Take the Quicksilver Flask and Chance to Poison as your gem reward. You're only going to use the Poison Gem if you have a green, green, red three link. Otherwise, just sell it or don't take the reward at all. At level eight, you're going to take Maim as your gem reward for getting to prison. So your three link for the next few acts is going to be Split in Steel, Maim and Chance to Bleed. In Act 2, you can replace Chance to Bleed with Cruelty, but the difference is fairly negligible. It's up to you. One important thing to note is that we need a lot of Orbs of Transmutation by Act 3 or 4 to get some crafts going. So pick up any rare, unidentified items on the ground and sell them. Even if you have no intention of using these items, we're just doing it to get Transmutation Shards. So that when we get to Act 3, we've got at least 8 Transmutes so we can craft some flat elemental damage on gear. The way you're going to play in this act, acts one and two, is you drop your totem on bosses, wait till your war banner gets max stats, which is 50, and again, drop that on the boss. War banner is a big, big damage boost early on. It gives you adrenaline for a couple of seconds, and that gives you more attack speed and more attack damage, and it is very noticeable on bosses. In terms of gear, look out for long swords and bastard swords on the floor. They're going to show on the filter. If you find a blacksmith's whetstone, use that along with a magic rustic sash and a two-handed sword to sell to the vendor to get back a percentage physical damage weapon. This adds a lot of damage early on. Once I get to level 12, I tend to swap to Spectral Helix, but you can stay with Split and Steel if you prefer. Somewhere around the end of Act 2, beginning of Act 3, you're going to take your first keystone, which is Precise Technique. This is big damage, as long as you keep your accuracy above your life. With the pathing that you take on the tree, this should always be the case until around Act 8 or 9, but early on when you first take it, just check your character sheet to make sure that your main hand and off and accuracy rating is higher than your max life. If it isn't, you can just go back to Act 1 and buy a precision gem and run that until you get that accuracy node. In Act 2, you're going to take Herald of Ash as your first gem reward in Act 2. You'll need intelligence on gear to run it. A lapis amulet is the best way to get this early on. In terms of the bandits in Act 2, you're killing all. When you kill Weaver, like I said, if you like, you can take Cruelty as a reward and replace Chance to Bleed. It's probably slightly more damage, but it is up to you. That's it for Act 2. There really isn't anything else we do with our character. Just continue on the lookout for sword upgrades. What you will start to see are lots of one-handed axes and swords that are highlighted in blue start to appear on the ground. These are for when we switch to Dual Wield and Lightning Strike. You don't really need to start picking these up until around mid act three and you only want to be picking ones up that have got attack speed of around 1.4 to 1.5 don't be picking up the bases that are 1.2 attack speed because the switch is going to feel horrible when we go to lightning strike so in act three start looking out for four links the ideal colors are green red red blue as this is also the final colors when we go lightning strike but red 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 green will also work this is also the time you want to start picking up good one-handed axe and sword bases Save any essences and alchemies you get to use on those weapons. We are going to use these weapons when we switch to Lightning Strike at level 38. At this point, we also want to be looking out for a replacement two-handed sword as we're going to switch our auras up once we hit the library and level 31, and we're going to go elemental instead of physical. Therefore, a sword with any flat elemental damage on is great as a replacement. At level 24, you're going to replace Herald of Ash with Anger for more damage. You're also around this time going to be picking up Ignite Chance on the tree and do 100% increased damage against ignited enemies. So having fire damage means you're always going to ignite. Once you kill Piety, you'll now have access to flat lightning damage and flat fire damage crafts. I recommend crafting flat lightning on two items. 
What this means is you should now be able to proc Trinity since Anger will give you the fire damage and then the crafts will give you lightning damage. You can craft these on either your rings or your amulet. I'd recommend not crafting it on the weapon because we're going to be getting rid of it in an axe time. Once you pick up and have used these crafts, we're then going to switch to the elemental gems. So you're going to go back to Act 2. You're going to get elemental damage with attacks and volatility. And you're going to replace your two support gems with those. So if you're on a three link, you're going to be helix, volatility and ellie damage with attacks. If you're on a four link, your red gem will be inspiration, which will pick up at level 31 when you do the library. If it's blue, it's going to be trinity. As mentioned, there's only really two combinations that work, and that's red, red, green, blue and red, 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 green. The bases that you're likely to roll these colors on are a pure armor base or an armor and evasion base. So you can use chromes if you pick up a four link, but it hasn't got the right colors on it, but it is a decent base type. The build should now start to feel a lot better. Then once you've got your one handed weapons, we're ready to switch to Lightning Strike once we've got a few more levels and our first Ascendancy. Act 4 is all about getting ready for the Lightning Strike switch. Run this act to the Crystal Veins waypoint, ensuring to get the Deseret Spirit quest on the way. You should now have four respect points from the quest we've already done. What you're going to need to do now is go out to the Fetter Pool in Act 1, clear that to get two respect points, then go and do through Sacred Ground in Act 2 and get another two points. We need these eight respect points for when we finish Lab. And that's what we're going to do now. I would do this on your two-handed setup. When you completed Lab, try and snag a valuable Transfigure gem to sell on trade for a little bit of a Chaos boost. Take First to Strike, Last to Fall as your first Ascendancy and leave. At this point, go back to Act 2 and by Corrupting Fever and link it to Life Tap, which you can buy in Act 1. Check on your skill bar that this skill uses over half your life. At this stage, I also pick up and run Blood Rage from Act 2 for Frenzies when clearing. You'll soon also pick up the Onslaught and Kill nodes, so progressing through the zones with Adrenaline, Onslaught and Kill is really, really quick. Level up to 40, then we're going to switch to Lightning Strike. As mentioned, you do need 8 respect points to do this. I'm not going to go through the transition on this video. Please refer to the trees in the POB, which show you what the tree should look like before you respec and after you've used the 8 respect points. You get multi-strike as your reward for getting to Belly of the Beast, so take that when you're ready for the switch. When you do switch to Lightning Strike, you're going to need one-handed axe with Ellie damage, one-handed sword with Ellie damage, some jewellery items with some crafted elemental damage, you want the Adrenaline, Blood Rage, your plus one Strike Mastery, and the tree exactly as per the POB. From here on out, every time you pick up a Vile Orb, go back to Act 1 and buy a Lightning Strike gem, Use a Vile Orb on it and try and get it into a Vile Lightning Strike gem. It just gives us a ton more damage on bosses, so the sooner we can get it, the better. But you are at the lap of the RNG gods because you need to get lucky to get it to turn into the Vile gem, but it'll happen at some point. In Act 5, there's nothing of note we need to do other than try and increase resistances ready for the 30% penalty. Being slightly undercapped going into Act 6 is fine, but you don't want to be running around 40% under resistance cap as the monsters hit harder from here on out. Obviously with the lead mechanic as well, you are going to be getting very, very punished if you are under resistance cap. What I tend to do is use the crafting bench to craft on whatever suffixes I can in Act 6 to try and add some resistances back. In Act 6, once you complete the Twilight Strand, you'll now have access to all the gems in your hideout. Go to your hideout, buy Added Lightning, Wrath and Smite and level them in your offhand. Also, go back to Act 3, buy Grace and Determination and level them up in your offhand as well. At this point, you're going to start to run into strength and intelligence problems if you haven't already. Use the plus 30 nodes to help with path past two of each. Don't worry if they have to use all four at some point. A gate amulets and heavy belts really help with this, and they're included in the loot filter. There's a few more mini respects noted in the POV, but nothing of note really happens from here until much later in the campaign. When we pick up the reservation wheel, which is going to be around Act 9 to Act 10, at this point, you can now run two 50% auras. I recommend running Wrath and Anger if Wrath has been able to level up. If not, you could use Determination and Anger, but more damage at this point is better. I do recommend Heisting in Act 6 to 8 to get some chaos. There's a detailed explanation of this in the video guide, so I'm not going to repeat it. As soon as your Smite Gem hits a decent level, start using it on bosses. Essentially, you link it to Increased Duration, then you use it once on a boss, and it gives you a temporary damage boost. In terms of full gem links, just refer to the POB for the links and the item progression. And that's kind of it from here. There's no more changes really, just level throughout the campaign. 
If you do follow my heist recommendations, you should have a five link by the time you leave heist and enter act nine and you'll have your Vile Lightning Strike gem. Leveling should be a breeze from here. If you've also managed to pick up two Ichimonji swords, then you're going to have an absolutely amazing time in the campaign and early maps. When you do pick up the unique swords, all you need to do is you need to make sure you are running Wrath and Anger because we don't get any flat elemental damage from the swords. It all comes from scaling our auras. So to proc Trinity, you're going to need Wrath and Anger. At this point, when you equip your swords, you obviously need to unequip the dual wield mastery because we're using one type of weapon. Complete your second and third lab to get your fortification boost, kill Katava, and then go into maps. When you start maps, if you weigh under resistance cap, use purity of elements instead of one of your damage auras. You will need to swap Trinity for added lightning as Trinity is not going to prop with only one damage aura. Make sure this is only temporary and switch back once your resistances are sorted. Other than just leveling and progressing your atlas, your first goal is to get some more attributes and resistances on gear so we can drop the resistance and accuracy wheel and take the acuity and accuracy wheel. You also want to drop the ignite nodes and take the sword nodes and the mastery to get frenzy on unique enemies. The goal is really just to get accuracy, resistance and attribute capped. There's going to be a separate video on how to craft the gear to ensure this happens. Once you hit level 78, you can buy a Perseverance belt and I recommend doing it as soon as you can. Then you're going to start filling out the cluster jewel setup. More on this in the crafting video. When you filled out your mana cluster jewel, you should now be able to run Wrath, Determination and Grace. With your two Ichimonjis, you shouldn't have any accuracy issues, but if you need to, you can run a level one precision. Flask wise, if you're following the guide and POB, you should have a Granite Flask, Jade Flask, Quicksilver Flask and a Quartz Flask. You should now also have plenty of alterations to roll suffixes on your flask. Then you want them to be armor, evasion, reduced curse effect, and attack speed. For your live flask, you want the standard instant divine live flask. With this setup on a five link, you should crush Uber Lab. Just make sure you fully understand how to get the most single target on bosses. If you're not sure, check out the how to play section in the main guide. This is really it. All you want to do from there is progress to a six link, push your gems to level 20, you should then be able to clear the atlas on this setup and get your first two void stones. Then it's a case of working towards the higher end gear for your non-crit version and then if you want to progress into a claw and shield crit variant. So what I thought would be good to close out the video is actually go through an example map based on the character I ran the complete playthrough on. There's a video linked in the description that is a run to level 78. All I've got on here, other than the gear I've got in the campaign and a couple of essences I've picked up along the way, are the two Ichimonjis and the Perseverance Belt, and then I run in a five link setup. I'm going to go and run a T9 map. So this is without Uber Lab and this is without the changes to the auras. So we're not running our Determination, Grace and Wrath setup. So we're going to be way under what a DPS would be. So I'm just going to double check my accuracy is fine. It is. And then we'll go and do a T9 map. So after Uber Lab, you should have about 20% more damage in this. So this is just to show you what progress is going to be like as maybe you're just about to hit Uber Lab. So we've got Foundry. It looks like we've got a Maven invitation we can run as well, actually. Um, so we have a Foundry map. Tier 9, not particularly very nice. It's avoid early ailments, extra damage, extra life, extra airy and resistances. So we'll go and run this map. I'll just demonstrate the clear and kill the boss and then we'll see how we get on with the Maven Invitation. Now, I think this is the second one. So without having Uber Lab done, we're not going to have very good defenses, as you can see here. So it might be a little bit rough, but it's a practice character, I know, so we'll give it a go. Um, so put Adrenaline on, activate our Blood Rage, and then we just run through the map. All you need to do is just keep an eye on your Adrenaline in the bar and when it looks like it's run out, because you can't reactivate it until it runs out. You just put it on again. It's not the end of the world, but obviously it's more damage. So when you get to the boss, you definitely want to make sure it's there. Then for tough rares like this, you use your smite buff as well. So we'll just go through and then we'll find the boss. And we've got to the boss. So we'll find him wherever he is. There he is. And that's kind of it. Easy as that. And that's with pretty horrible mods on the map. No Uber Lab, five link, no gear other than a couple of Ichimonjis and a belt. So we will go and try this uh, Maven Invitation, but I think we 
We might struggle for defences because this is going to be about level 75, but we'll give it a go. And I have no idea what bosses I put in here either. Ah, oh, not too bad. Ah, the burning ground is causing me problems, though, I'll be honest. <laughs> okay, it was fine. We got it done. But you would probably have Uber Lab done by the time you do that, which means you're going to have tons more um, armor and evasion. But yeah, that's kind of if you wanted to rush through with that Uber Lab, you can definitely push it to sort of T11 maps on a 5 link and no gear. Once you get your Uber Lab and you get your proper auras in play, then you're going to be able to push up to sort of mid tier rev maps. But this is based on obviously this current league. It doesn't have any of the new modifiers. So I would recommend just being safe. As soon as you can do Uber Lab, do it. As soon as you can upgrade to a 6 link, do it. Don't try and push on worse gear if you can afford to get better, because the sooner you get geared, the sooner you're going to be running through your tiers and getting your map completion done. Uh, that's it for the video. Hope it helps people out. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.